to try and save everybody a little bit of time. I'm just going to go over a brief overview of what I have here. So I've created a brand new project. I'm not going to go through those steps. I'm assuming that you have some experience with the Unreal Engine, how to get things installed and launch a project. So the project I have here though, if you want to follow along exactly, is a blueprint based, completely empty project. So no starter content will be needed here. The quality settings have been set for desktop and set to the highest quality. So this should be looking pretty good, even though we're working with the 2D assets. Now, before jumping in and getting things moving around and getting our player set up and bringing in the textures and all of those good things for the game, I just want to go through a kind of few housekeeping steps that I tend to take in any new project that I create. So there's going to be a few things that I wanted to set my project to do just for convenience. And I didn't want to do it off screen in case you're following along and wanted the same results. So the first thing I tend to do is we can see here, uh, if we open a new blueprint or asset by default, this will open in a, a kind of floating window, which can get a little bit annoying. I prefer everything to be docked up here at the top of my screen. So to get this result, I'll show you what we get at the moment. We have a blueprint we can use here, which is the sky sphere. And you can see actually that hasn't opened at all. This is on my second window. So I need to drag this over. And like I said, we get this floating screen. If we want that here, we have to drag that to the top and we'll have to do it for every new blueprint or asset that we want to open. So ideally I'd like them all to dock up here by default. So I'm going to go to the edit, editor preferences, and then just here we can see the asset editor open location. I'll change that from default and I'll change this to main window. You've got a lot of different options here as well if you wanted to, but I prefer this to just be the main window by default. So this now means that if we don't have anything open at all, we can click this again. And we can see that the sky sphere blueprint is now open exactly where I wanted that. So that's going to be the first thing that I tend to change. Then next, there's just a few other kind of small issues that I find with the default project. So this is a little bit hard to see in the, uh, the recording. I know I've tried this before, but you can see as I zoom in here, the floor seems to be going from a kind of darker gray to a lighter gray. And the same thing happens if we press start and look around, we can see some adaptation happening with the lighting here. Now this is the auto exposure is trying to recreate what the eyes generally do when you're going from a light to a dark environment or vice versa. And it's a very useful thing to have on, but generally it's something that you're going to want to control in a post process effect or through your camera directly. And what this can lead to is that you can start creating something in the editor that you think looks pretty cool. And then when you press play, the colors all look saturated and washed out. So to avoid this happening, we're going to want to have basically what we see in the editor be exactly what we see when we press play as well, unless we override that manually in some form of uh, post-process system. So to fix this, we can go to project settings or we'll go to auto or just search for auto and exposure. So auto E will bring this up. There's no other results here. So auto exposure is what we're looking to turn off. And that now means if we go back in here, even if we get pretty close, we can see that we're not getting that darker colored floor as that's not what we're gonna see in the game. So if we press play, that will now also be exactly the same as it is in the editor. So we now know that if we want our world to be darker, we need to actually update that in our viewport just here. Next, we'll just want some of our folder structure set up. So this is going to allow us, if we do this now, we can jump in and just start adding blueprints, bringing in assets, setting up materials, and all of those good things as and when we need them. And we don't need to worry about our project structure because generally we know that we're going to have a very similar structure for pretty much any project that we work on. So what I'll be doing is in the content folder, which is our root folder, we'll create a new folder named assets. So this will be where all of our external things, textures, models, anything like that, that we might bring in sound effects will all go inside of this folder. Now for this set of videos, I know that we're going to need a few different uh, file types. We'll be working with textures, sprites, flip books and different tile assets. So I'm going to create a folder for each of these. The shortcut, by the way, here, if you wanted to create a new folder is control shift and N when you're selected inside of the folder, you want this to be a child of. And that should do it for assets for now. If we do end up adding anything else, we can always come back and add new folders later. Then back inside of the content folder, we'll also have a blueprints folder. And again, inside of the content folder, uh, we could also do with a maps folder. Now that we have our maps folder, we can also go ahead and save this untitled map. We can see here it's untitled. We can press Control and S, place this inside of the maps folder, and we'll just call this main, and this will be our main map that we'll be working from for the rest of the project. Now that also allows us to do something else, uh, which is to set some project defaults, and we'll go into that in just a moment. Uh, basically, we want this to be the map that we load up as soon as we close and reopen the project. 
Before doing that, we can also set some of the other defaults, such as the character that we'll be controlling in game, and also the game mode, which is controlling the different controllers, the characters and things like that, that which will be spawned in, and the in-game logic that will be uh, kind of tracked if we have things like pickups, scoring, or any kind of objective system if you wanted to flesh this project out and take it further by yourself. So to do this, I'm going to go to the Blueprints folder. We'll create a new Blueprint in here. This is done by right-clicking, going to Blueprint class, finding the Game Mode Base, which is going to be the Game Mode class we want to use. I'll name this one BP underscore Game Mode Base. So something else to note in these uh, selections of videos, I'll be following the standard Unreal Naming Convention, so you can be confident that uh, if you wanted to put anything on the marketplace or just work with other people familiar with the Unreal ecosystem, this naming convention should be a pretty good way to get you started. Uh, so BP for blueprint underscore the name of the class. And just in case we wanted to make any child classes of this game mode, we're going to specify that this is the base or parent version of the classes. And that will make a little bit more sense when we get into the rest of the videos as we'll be using that kind of hierarchical structure a little bit later. For now though we can open this and what we want to do in here is set the default class here that we'll be controlling when we have a character created. Of course we don't have that character yet so we're just going to go back into the blueprints folder, right click again, create a new blueprint class and we want to find the type of character we can control. So we have a couple here, uh, the base controllable ones we have the pawn or the character now, neither of these are really created specifically for 2D characters, and we actually have a class ready for that inside of Unreal. So if we type paper, basically everything we'll be using is part of the paper 2D system. So we've got flipbooks, which will be our animations, sprites if you want something which doesn't animate. We've got things like tile maps and uh, train editors, and then we can see down here we have a child of the pawn is the character which is just a controllable pawn with a few extra things such as the capsule collider and it expects a skeletal mesh and things like that. And then we have the alternative which is the paper character which is the child of the character class but instead of having a 3D skeletal mesh it predefines some properties such as a 2D paper flipbook which is exactly what we want. So we're going to select this one, we'll call this one BP underscore player base. So again if we ever have any kind of alternate versions of the player that we want to potentially spawn in then we can make those a child of our base class. All of the basic logic though will be in our player base class, such as the movement, health variables, and things like that we can put in here. So with that, we can have a quick look in here, but there's not very much we can see at the moment. Uh, we don't have any sprites or flip books that we can assign. Um, like I said, this is going to be controlling the animation though. Uh, but what we have is a capsule collider and a character movement component, which is going to allow us to very easily set up the movement for our character class. So with that ready, we can now go back to our game mode. We're going to go to the default pawn class and we'll change this to the BP underscore player base. So this won't do anything at the moment. If we press play, see over here, we're still getting the game mode base. So this is uh, not using ours at the moment, which means we're also getting the default pawn, which if you've never seen this before, is the gray sphere. So if you ever see this, this is the default pawn, which means if you're not expecting this to be used, it means you've probably missed a step somewhere and you haven't selected your custom class to be selected. And this gives us that kind of uh, flying around spectator mode type movement. So what we want to do is go to the project settings. We want to set the game mode to be the default, the one that we've created to be the default for the project to use. We do that through the maps and mode section. We're going to go to the game mode base here. We'll change this from game mode base to BP underscore game mode base, which is ours. We can see that automatically knows to use our player as the default player. And now if we go in and press play, the difference here is that we don't have any movement because to the right hand side we can see we're using the BP underscore game mode base and because we have a player start in the world it's created the BP underscore player base at that location. So I'm just pressing F8 here to eject from the player which allows me to fly around. We can see that has changed to possess here uh, and we can see that we have the player base at the start of the level. And the reason we can't move this around is because we haven't put any code in our player class to give it any understanding of what movement is. You can see it has things like gravity already processed here though, so if we uh, possess, we're always going to be on the floor at the moment. But that's a good start. That now means that when we do start adding that code to our player class, the project knows to select that as the default class to try and possess and run the logic through. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live.
And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.